All right, guys, fans have been starving for a UFC event, and what a perfect guest on right now, headlining the big returning card this week. And don't blink because Kai Kara France is back in the house on submission ready, live from, live from Las Vegas. Kai, thanks for joining us, man. We hear you uh, had a little bit of a rough journey in, a, a few pieces of clothes lost along the way. Yeah, cheers, boys. Um, yeah, I lost my lost my bag at the airport. So, oh no! Just um, just that's what you have to deal with when you're traveling halfway across the world. Just we're here now, so got my mouthpiece. One thing I've always learned in my career: always carry your mouth guard with you, and um, that's that's the priority over the toiletries, priority over the <laughs> undies, because um, then we can still fight. So uh, nothing I'm not used to. But yeah, after this interview, I'll go and. Sort out what I need. Uh, I've got a few friends in Vegas, so they're, they're going to give me some training gear. Hopefully my bag turns up in tonight or tomorrow. Who knows? But yeah, business as usual. Oh, devastating, man. I, I feel for you because that's just such a frustrating feeling. Um, out of curiosity, though, so with the, the mouthpiece, where do you carry that? Is that just in, in your pocket at all times when you're on the plane? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, ha- I had a, uh, a carry-on bag with me, so I had a few things. Not like a something I put in my back pocket or or put in my um um yeah put it next to my phone. It's just or wear it. No. <laughs> it's just just, just in case they don't upgrade you to first class, <laughs> they're like, "Sorry, yeah. sir, you, you just put it in." Well, now we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we stay ready. That's yeah, <laughs> dude. Speaking of clothes as well, congratulations are in order, right? Because you got a new clothing line. Um, people that haven't checked it out, you can go to uh, you know dot co dot nz and check it out right now. Uh, what's your favorite piece from there, man? As people are jumping on and perusing it right now, is there a favorite sort of Kai Car France thing that need, people need to buy right now? Yeah, it's been awesome that um, I get to collab with um, a really well-known brand in New Zealand now, um, you know, and uh, with my own brand, KKF. So it's something that I'm into, something that I'm passionate about, which is clothing outside of training gear. I do like to wear um, comfortable and and quality, I guess, um, garments. And for this range, it was more summer, summer range, but in New Zealand, we didn't really have a summer, so... (laughs) <laughs> it was like uh yeah, a mix mix um of items. We had hoodies, t shirt uh t shirts, basketball shorts. And then um yeah, if you want to jump on board, um we are mo- mostly based online. But before I left we did a little pop up, um so we had a presence in the community. So it's nice that I had fans come in and bring their signed uh bring their um trading cards or posters I could sign and they'll buy merch as well. So it's nice that um, people are following the journey and um, it's more than just clothing. It's like, um, yeah, jumping on board and, and showing their support. So um, awesome that I get to do that. And, you know, this could be life after fighting. Who knows? Um, wow. Just something on the side. Well, yeah, dude, I was going to say, you've always been a bit of a fashionable guy. Like whenever we see you out and about, you're always sporting like a cool starter hat. You've always got like the cool tee on. And I wonder like, a part of you, obviously, fighting is your dream job and it's something you've been getting ready for and preparing for for a really long time to be on the stage. But a part of you must be sort of fulfilling a dream, right? Being able to do this. Yeah, for sure. Like in high school, this is something I did. Um, mm. I would train. and then KKF around it, in uh, in high school? It wasn't KKF. I had another brand. Uh, oh, it was, what was it? It was called... It was like called, bitches get uh, money. <laughs> 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 but no, it was, um, I was really into the movie. I still am. It's one of my favorite movies, The Warriors. Uh, I yeah. did the New York gang um, back in the 80s. And there was a gang in that movie called The Boppers. Mm-hmm. And I like I loved that name. So I just went with Bopper Apparel. Auckland was my brand. And me and my, my friend at the time, um, we used to sell it at school. And it was actually really popular. We made a bit of money. We just put it on T-shirts and like um, – screen printed at the local um, local place in our, in our city. And then, yeah, they were just flying out the window. So I actually ended up selling all, I uh, like spending all the profits from that. But I knew one day I'd come back into that space and, and um, get back into it. And now it's perfect timing, I guess, having a platform, having to um, 
you know market yourself and now i get to do it as a like a side thing so something i've always yeah been um been into uh, it was pretty cool when i was in new york i met up with action bronson um, mm. he's been following my career for a while and he's just come out with a new sneaker line with new balance and he sent me out up here as well so it's cool to have um i guess people that i look up to in that space and just um inspired by their work and now you know we get stuff sent to uh get stuff sent to me and um you know I, I, there is definitely a pathway there um but more pro- my priority is fighting obviously that's this is what um i put everything into but you got to be doing these things on the side while you're in your career because when you do want to take a step back um those things become i guess your passion and you don't need to fight to you know stick into that space 100 percent, man dude that's sick especially like in high school days for you guys to do like the kind of marketing and whatever you did to like get that kind of result and th- those kind of sales that's sick uh, and the fact that it's sort of coming full circle as well and yeah 100 percent. like one day when you don't need to be getting in the cage it'd be much better to just be like making all that money like with the clothing sales and stuff out of curiosity how much money did you make uh back in that back in the day with uh, the boppers so I was at what's 15 at the time, 15 or 16. Mm. Um, so I made about five grand. Holy in sales. shit. There's a lot of, <laughs> lot of money when wow. you're only 16. That's um, a lot of money and- when you're 15. That's <laughs> huge. 100 uh, bucks is a lot buying, when you're 15. That's it. And I ended up buying a, um, a New Year's festival ticket and like spending it over summer. So um, <laughs> yeah, it went to a good cause, but. I always knew one day I'll say, okay, I'll, I'll get back into it. Um, just have to wait for the right time. Awesome. Well, I, I just want to see like a boppers, like purple sort of collab uh, KKFT in the future <laughs> if things go to plan, because I'll be the first one to buy it. And by the way, second congratulations in order, because you're just days away from headlining your first UFC card, dude. I mean, I got to say, yeah. like, People don't really talk about it, but it's a rare privilege that many get to experience. Um, there's, you know, only a certain amount of people that have headlined a UFC card in their career. So it is a big deal, especially over in the States. How's it feel? Yeah, it feels awesome. Feels like I've earned this in, in the UFC's eyes where uh, there was a main event for this card and it fell through. And um, Ash said, do you want it? And I said, of course, like, this is what I... This is what I do. I fight the best guys and I, I can go five rounds, even if it's like on a few weeks notice. That's just the kind of conditioning that we, we uh, prepare for at, at City Kickboxing. So um, big, big uh, milestone, I guess, to um, headline. But uh, it's the first of many. Like we're here to, uh, to be the best. And um, Eugene's been so smart and his approach to fighting where the system that we have in place has already got us ready for title fights. Um, so the adjustments aren't too drastic. Um, the volume that we have at our gym is already pretty high, so you can't actually add much more to it, even though you have a five-rounder um, ahead of you. So, yeah, I, I'm glad to be in the spotlight. I, I'm glad to, uh, I guess, showcase the flyweights um, on a main main event slot, and um, it's where I should be. So just coming off a title fight, um, you know, I've had five or six uh, bonuses now, so... My resume speaks for itself. I'm, I'm here to put on exciting fights. I'm here to fight the best guys. And um, it's been a long time since I fought, about, about 11 months. So I'm ready to get back in there and put it on this guy and, and um, go for these finishes. That's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm paid to do. That's what uh, the people watch me fight. That's what they're expecting. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Vegas is a home away from home for us. We've fought here so many times. I fought here through the pandemic, through COVID. So I'm, I'm used to, I guess, smaller crowds. Um, and yeah, I, I don't really build it up too much than it needs to. Um, I've just been focusing on myself and getting better in those 11 months that I've been away. And um, yeah, ready, ready to get back in there now. 100 Well, I bet you you are, man. I was going to ask you, how tough was that period uh, being away for that long? Um, over COVID? No, no, just like the, the last 11 months, like oh, the last oh, time you fought, obviously it was yeah. July 2022. Yeah. And I imagine you yeah. would have wanted to get back a lot sooner, but obviously you couldn't. How, how tough was that sort of being away and, and not as active as you wanted? Yeah, so just injuries, little mm. things like that. Life gets busy. You know, I've got a family, um, you know, I've got a two and a half year old. I've got a, um, another baby on the way. So 
just things that take kind of priority and it, it just didn't fit um just didn't work out i was supposed to be on that perth card in february when alex fought mm. islam and um i had to pull out but just because something um my back keep uh, recurring with an injury and um it just felt like okay let's just get this sorted first before we book anything so um this camp has been amazing it's been 12 weeks that we've built for and and um no injuries no no um setbacks uh, we've just been pretty much full go from from the 12 week mark so uh, i'm happy um the camp that we put together um i'm happy with the stuff that i've been able to work on we've had craig jones um over at our gym um training with us so being able to kind of pick his brain with um the details of grappling and you know, we've had so many great fights happen in the last few months. So I've just taken inspiration from that. You know, it went as he fought um, Pereira in New York. I was there. Um, you know, thing, things didn't go um, as his way. But just being there in fight week, soaking that up, kind of visualizing everything. And then being in Perth for fight week, not fighting, but still, you know, taking on um, these these ride-alongs that I feel like a uh, a massive because you're still involved in some way being a guest fighter um, but you don't have to have the pressure of fighting but I'm still taking it all in seeing how um, the crowd's reacting soaking up all that support from um, I, I guess Perth which is pretty much a, a New Zealand inside Australia um, so that was that was cool being a part of it and then seeing what the last few months have been like for our gym you know is he going out there and Shock in the world, one of the biggest uh, moments in our generation for combat sport, knocking out mm. Alex Pereira in the way he did. Um, just like you can't, you couldn't write a better script. And I take away so much from that just because the mental, um, I guess, focus and the kind of character as he has is, is um, yeah, just, just amazing. Never, qu- never qu- once did he ever say, um, I can't beat this guy. And in his head, he's always knowing that I can get it back. And um, that's what I love to see. I love to see that confidence where when everyone else is doubting you, you go in there and you you get it done. And, um, yeah, that's why it was so shocking, just the way he did it and um, how he kind of pumped himself up. And, I, I, yeah, I took a lot, a lot away from that fight. And then um, just little things um, in our gym, or well, not little things, but other fighters going out, going over um, – into battle and, and getting the job done um i take a lot away from that so now it's my turn to get it, get back in there um while i've been away i've been you know doing other things outside of fighting i've been a coach for uh, our new zealand rugby team the the warriors so yeah being in that being in that space has been awesome but behind the scenes and seeing how much effort goes into a rugby league season um how much travel these guys have to do how much is um, involved in getting ready for a rugby game, how much injuries you're nursing week to week. Um, so I'm in that space um, with my teammate, John Bucky, and and um, he has been awesome adding value to um, to that team, and, and we're a part of that team now as well. So the whole season, I think there have been about 11 games now we've had in this season. So 11 weeks I've had to, um, been privileged to see these guys, you know, train and then and go compete uh week in and week out and uh before i left i brought in izzy with me to come at, um to come train and give the give the boys a push and, and to talk in, in front of them and talk about winning and talk about i guess the championship mindset and then um they brought me on uh, upstage um in front of them and they gifted me a shirt and i just talked about how it's my turn to go out there and 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 uh I guess, put it all on the line. I've been watching you boys do it, so I take inspiration from that, and that's my turn. So it's cool that I'm still in my career, uh, being in a, in a coaching space, mm-hmm. and um, something new for me. I've never been uh, in a rugby uh, league setting, uh, but something that I, I'm passionate about, something I grew up watching, and um, it's awesome that we can be together, collabing and um, helping each other reach our goals. Dude, that's sick, man. You're collabing with everybody. The UFC, you got the clothing line, <laughs> uh, rugby, doing everything, man. But I got to ask, you are talking about Israel and Pereira before and how much you took away from that fight. I wonder how much that sort of inspires you and motivates you, especially with Brandon Moreno, right? Because you had the two fights, didn't quite go your way, but that's kind of, I know you've got this fight coming up now, but obviously that's kind of the, the end goal, right? No, definitely. Um it's just that self belief you've got to have in yourself, and mm. Izzy's always been the reminder of um, it's that the way you talk to yourself. You you got to always hold on to that hope, that that um, that fighting spirit that's always got to be embedded in you, 
and that's something you can't learn. It's just something that's got to be in you. I guess me being Maori, be, me being, um, uh, I always fall back into my culture and, and I look at uh, what my ancestors would have done. And um, and that's a great blue, a blueprint for me of how I can navigate my arm um, through, through life and uh, just know that it's in my blood. It's my blood to go fight. It's in my blood to, to uh, go to war. Um, so that's something I tap into as well. So, so many different layers. Um, but for now, uh, for where I'm, I'm at in my career, just experience a lot more wiser. Um, and then also coming into this next fight, I've had a bit more time to, um, I guess, dive deeper into um, what I'm bringing to the what I'm bringing to the table and and uh, putting just so much more into it. So I'm 30 now. Um, I've got a a lot of experience in the UFC. Um, and yeah, just just um, ready to get back in there and and uh, show the world why we're why we're one of the best. So that's a fight that I, I'd love to run back with Moreno, but I'm not really looking at that fight at the moment. I'm just looking at what's in front of me, and that's uh, Amir Abazi. Um, I go out there and, and put on a put on a show and put this guy away. Um, you know, who knows what's next for me? But it just shows everyone, okay, there's levels to this. Um, Kai's right there for the next with the best guys in the world and, and um, that's all I'm focused on. Awesome, man. You're speaking of a great team. I mean, we saw the five dietitian walk past in the background there. Everything everything measured precisely when it comes to CKB. Now, speaking of Amir, man, sorry, just, sorry, quickly, just, be- just, just, just quickly, before we forget, got to remind everybody, Dennis, you're talking about the five dietitian being dialed in. You can be as dialed in as you want, but don't ever overlook the importance of trimming your nose hairs and your ear hairs, especially if you're trying to make that weight, right? No, but seriously, nothing looks more ridiculous than you got those ridiculous nose hair poking out and your ear hairs as well, especially at, at this ripe age. Be the best version of yourself. Be the best man that you can be and mind your manholes. No better way to do that than with Manscapes Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer. It uses a powerful 7,000 RPM motor with the improved steel blade system that upgrades the cutting performance from their first generation to better whack your weeds. Plus, the nose and ear hair trimmer comes with the skin-safe technology, which reduces nicks, snags, and tugs. It's also cordless, rechargeable, and has a battery of up to 45 minutes of runtime. Best of all, the Weed Whacker 2.0 will be in all of Manscaped's tool sets, including the Platinum Package 4.0 and the Performance Package 4.0, both of which are the best value for money. So no matter which one you pick, you win. And uh, best of all, guys, save 20% off and free shipping with the code submission at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code submission at manscaped.com. From below to up top, get the best in grooming at Manscaped's shop. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. And speaking about value for money, why don't you find yourself some online thanks to NordVPN, who are hooking everybody up right now with this crazy deal. Check this out. You guys get a massive, huge discount. And also four months for free for a very limited time if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash submission or click the link in the description below. NordVPN, the best VPN out there on the market today. You can use one account up to six devices. It can save you money. You can buy cheaper flights, change your Netflix location to find out new movies or like me, save money on subscriptions. I changed my location to Malaysia and got a super cheap NBA league pass just like that. The possibilities are endless thanks to NordVPN. And right now, you guys can try it completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. One of the best apps in the business today with no speed throttling as well. Try it for yourself. You'll be converted in a second. But, uh, Kai, just speaking of Amir, man, uh, before we wrap up, you mentioned it. Obviously, you're focused on him. He's undefeated his, his UFC career so far. He's kind of dangerous everywhere, showing that he's able to get a number of different finishes from different positions in different spots. As we sort of wrap this up, Kai, and I mean, I, I can already kind of get a feeling for what you're going to say here, but I'll, if you can add any specifics to it, what's your prediction here? How do you see yourself see yourself winning uh, this fight? And I suppose the question is, how early do you see yourself stopping Amir? Yeah, so Amir's on a five-fight win streak. He's got momentum. He believes in himself, you know, Then, and I love that he's confident. Uh, but so am I, you know, this is... This is a guy that I've um, been preparing for for the last 12 weeks. Um, I just don't see myself getting taken down. I fought these guys before. I fought these wrestlers. I fought these grapplers. And um, we uh, passed, passed the test with flying colors. Um, the thing that separates me from, from Amir, from the rest of these flyweights, is 
I'm accurate. And when I when I when I um get these guys tired or get them sick and guessing themselves, that's when I put them away. So I, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Like I, I love that I'm fighting guys that are on a big winning streak, coming in with my heart, like hyper momentum, and then I can go out there and just take it all, take everything that I've earned, take everything that um will propel me to another title star, uh, title fight or um, climb the rankings to get back in that picture. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I see myself knocking this guy out um, first, second, third. Uh, I don't see this going five rounds. Um, if it does, you know, I've got the gas tank to do that. Uh, but I'm looking forward to just seeing me hit the first, uh, land the first shot and then seeing what he does. He realises I, uh, I stuffed up. Um, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait, man. Can't wait to see it. Follow the man uh, at Kaikar France on socials. And of course, check out the man's clothing line at youknow.co.nz and uh, see the man back. How can you not be excited after something like that to see the man uh, this week at UFC on ESPN 46? Kai, best of luck, man. Thank you so much for chatting with us. I appreciate your time, man. No worries, boys. I better go off to the outlets and get some undies and some stuff. <laughs> <laughs>